We're now looking at the epidermis in more detail. So let's start off with the basement membrane zone. And here we have the basement membrane zone. This is the dermis below and the epidermis will be above. And we said that the epidermis is primarily a cellular layer. And the most common type of cell in the epidermis is called a keratinocyte. A keratinocyte. And they're called keratinocytes because later on, as we're going to see, they produce a lot of the horny, hard protein called keratin. But when they're first formed, they don't contain keratin. They first form down here in the basal layer. And they're cuboidal to columna in shape. So here we have the keratinocytes on the basement membrane zone. And these keratinocytes are mitotically active from time to time. They will mitotically divide, producing two daughter cells. That's why this basement layer is sometimes called the germinative layer. It's actually called the stratum basale, the basal stratum. And it's going to follow round the basement membrane zone. So there are, there are these keratinocytes in the stratum basale, in the basement, just above the basement membrane. But there's other cells here as well. There's another type of cell that you get here called a melanocyte. Now the melanocytes have kind of sort of wavy arms like this. They're, they're called dendritic cells. And what the melanocytes do is the melanocytes produce melanin. Now, what colour you are is determined by the melanin in your skin. So I'm a bit white, so my melanocytes actually don't produce much melanin. Unless I go in the sun, in which case I'll gradually brown off a little bit, because my melanocytes will start producing melanin. The melanocytes are the cells, the melanin is the pigment they produce. But if you're black, your melanocytes are producing black pigment. If you're brown, your melanocytes are producing brown pigment. So whatever skin colour you have, it's because the melanocytes are producing melanin, the pigment of that colour. And this, of course, is completely genetically controlled. It's controlled by the genes that give rise to the melanocytes. And then here next to the melanocyte, we've got another, another uh, keratinocyte as well. Now, as well as that, in the basal zone, in the stratum basale, there are other types of cells, not many of them, but they're called Merkel cells. Merkel cells. So here we have a uh, Merkel cell. And these Merkel cells are actually sensory detectors. They will detect light touch. So if you just brush the surface of the skin, the reason you can feel that is because that's detected by these Merkel cells detecting light touch and sensation. And because they're sensory cells, obviously they need to have a sensory nerve associated with them. So just below the epidermis, in close contact to the Merkel cell, we've got these structures called Merkel discs. And these are connected up to a nerve fibre. So what happens is when there's light touch, that's detected by the Merkel cell. And the combination of the Merkel cell 
and the Merkel cell disc generates a new nerve impulse. So the mechanical effect of the touch causes the Merkel cell and the Merkel cell disc to generate a new nerve impulse and that then goes off in this sensory neuron eventually to the brain where it's experienced as sensation. It's one of the aspects of tactility. So we've got keratinocytes dividing, we've got Merkel cells and we've got melanocytes producing the pigments. And here we've got other keratinocytes as well lining the basement membrane zone. And actually some of the keratinocytes are what we call stem cells. So from time to time one of the keratinocyte stem cells will divide and produce two cells. One will stay as a stem cell, waiting for next time, but the other keratinocyte that's produced will divide into two. Each of those will divide again, so you've got four. They'll divide again, so you've got eight. They'll divide again, so you've got 16, and that will produce a small population of new keratinocytes. So more keratinocytes are dividing. And we already know that the nutrients and the oxygen for these metabolic processes are diffusing from the dermis below, from the tissue fluids of the dermis. So the oxygen for this is diffusing from the tissue fluids of the dermis. The nutrients, for example, that's glucose, C6H12O6 is diffusing from the tissue fluids of the dermis into the keratinocytes of the epidermis. The amino acids that are required box for protein. These have to diffuse too as well. And then the waste products are going to diffuse from the cells of the epidermis back into the dermis. So for example the waste product of carbon dioxide is going to diffuse that way. Nitrogen containing waste products as a result of protein metabolism are going to diffuse from the epidermis back into the dermis. Now as these cells are dividing I think you can see that if new cells are being produced as a result of mitosis in the stratum basale in the basement layer here, then as new cells are produced, there's not going to be enough space. So what happens is older cells are going to be pushed up. So the older cells are going to be pushed up away from the basement membrane. And I think you can already start to see now we're going to get layers of cells, we're going to get strata. Now, inside these cells, the young keratinocytes, there are filaments of protein called tonofilaments. So there's tonofilaments. It's part of what you call the cytoskeleton of the cell. Inside cells, you have networks of proteins. And they're particularly pronounced. The cytoskeleton in the keratinocytes is particularly pronounced and we have these tonofilaments here. So if we looked at that under larger magnification, imagine this is a keratinocyte here, we'd see that it contains tonofilaments. Filaments of protein inside the individual keratinocytes. And here we have an adjacent cell also containing tonofilaments. 
And connected to the tonofilaments, we have other protein structures that join cells to cells. And these are called desmosomes. So the tonofilaments are intracellular. They're inside the cell. And the desmosomes are intercellular. They are between the cells. So here we have uh, desmosomes. The desmosomes are connected to the tonofilaments. So there's tonofilaments and desmosomes connecting them. And then we have another cell. We have another cell beneath that, maybe there. And again, this cell is going to contain tonofilaments inside of protein and that's going to be connected to the other cells via desmosomes. So what we have is all of these cells are going to be in connect, interconnected by these uh, desmosomes. The cells are all interconnected. And this is very important because it gives the epidermis a lot of strength. You can't pull these cells apart because every other cell is connected to every other cell or it's all its neighbour cells by these desmosomes. But also it's very important that skin is flexible. For example, over your knuckles you need the skin to be able to stretch, or over the elbows you need to be able to stretch. So what we need is a combination of strength and flexibility. And that's exactly what these desmosomes provide. They hold it all together, but they're also very strong, holding the whole thing together. Now we've mentioned that there's keratinocytes, melanocytes and Merkel cells. There's a fourth type of cell in the epidermis and it's an immune cell and it's called a dendritic cell and again it's kind of got long arms like this that spread out it's got dendrites that spread out and we'll just call these dendritic cells actually what they are they are a specialized form of monocyte so in the blood you have monocytes but monocytes migrate into the tissues and in the tissues, a monocyte can either differentiate into a big cell called a macrophage, which is phagocytic, or alternatively, given particular sets of signals, the monocyte can differentiate into a dendritic cell. And these dendritic